Hi, this is Pete from CivilLightHowTo.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at how we can style a Silverlight button to be uh, something very similar to what you'd find in Windows Media Player. So, to give you an idea of what we're talking about, uh, we're going to be styling a button uh, that looks very similar to this. So, here we have an example of the same style being used across the three buttons. In this case, obviously, the style background has been set to red. In this case, it's been set to blue. Um, also to note, obviously we've got the content sent to text still here and the content set to a path there, so that's obviously being honored. And also we've got a shrunk button here with all the paths within it um, all kind of lining up and scaling uniformly with the button. So without further ado, let's take a look at how we can create this. Okay, so we'll fire up a new project here in Expression Blend 4 and we'll go with the default Silverlight application and website and we'll call it Glossy Button. Click OK. And to the main grid here we'll add a button. Drag it down through to the middle so we can see it and set its dimensions to 100 by 100. Now that size could be anything um, obviously we want to send it to square because we're making a round button and it'll make our life easier. Right click, go edit template, edit a copy. We'll leave the button style name to uh, the default and click OK. And then we'll remove all visual elements uh, in this uh, template except for the content presenter which we want to keep so that uh, consumers of this button can set the uh, content within it. OK making sure that the grid is selected. I'm going to go over here, select an ellipse, and then double click that. It fills the grid, and we'll remove the stroke because we don't need it. And then the fill itself, we're going to template bind back up to the button's background color. And we'll move that to behind the content presenter so the content presenter sits in front of it. All right, looking good. So now we're going to work on a series of highlights and shadows just to give this a little gloss and dimension. So first things first, let's rename this ellipse to background. And we'll copy that, paste it, and we'll call this new ellipse shadow just to give it a little depth. And that shadow will obviously remove the the template biting, and we'll go over here, give it a gradient fill, make it radial, and then we want to change the uh, gradient from dark to, from dark to light to light to dark, which is easy enough to do with the reverse gradient stops over here. And then we want to take this; we just want this as a transparent overlay, so we'll take this opacity and knock it right back down to 20%. So we've still got the background color showing through, but now we've got a little dimension to the button. Next thing we're going to do is take that shadow, copy it, paste it, move it back up here. We're going to call this Top Highlight. Set the opacity here back up to 100%. Take this fill, go white to white, because basically we're t dealing with a highlight, which is white, and now we're just going to deal with the uh, the alpha values for this. So in this case we want to go from transparent in the middle out to a solid color in the outside so that we can let some of the color, uh, the underlying color through. Uh, but before we do that I think we'll just give it some breathing room. We'll give it uh, five, uh, five units all the way around here all nice and good. And and then what we'll do is take the center, set its opacity here or the alpha value down to zero. So we're letting the inside color shine through and then we'll, we're blending all the way out to a solid white color on the outside. So what I'd like to do now is manipulate this path, um, this inner path here to have, give us the shape of this that top highlight. And in order to do that, I've got to take this ellipse and convert that into an actual path. So under the object menu, path, and then convert to path. I'll go to my direct selection tool over here, grab the bottom node on this newly created path, that you can see it is a newly created path, and hold shift to constrain its up and down movement. 
to straight vertical and I'm gonna drag this all the way up to here to give us that top shape alright cool and then going over to the gradient tool I'm gonna take it drag it down and shape it back up to something that's more round like that okay looking good I think the edges are a little harsh so we'll go over to the stop over here and take the pace on that that stop down to about 95 percent perfect cool so the next thing we're going to work on then is the little highlight that you see down at the bottom and the way we're going to do that we can either set that ourselves to some sort of uh, preset value but I think what's m uh, more useful to the consumer of this button is to allow them to set the color so um, what we'll do is hijack the border brush uh, for the button itself because we're not using that there is no borders on this uh, button so we'll hijack that and allow the users to use that uh, to set the bottom highlight color you'll see what I mean now so I'm just gonna navigate out of this template quickly select the button go to its border brush here and I'm gonna set it just to a solid uh, highlight color here for the time being. So yeah, something like along those lines. It's a nice, nice color. Okay, so let's go back into the template now and use that color. So I'm going to take this uh, shadow over here and I'm going to copy it. And uh, you know what? I'm going to take the background itself, copy it, and paste it. Move it up here and I am going to call this a bottom color and in this case instead of being template bound to the background color I'm going to go to the border brush itself very cool so I noticed that obviously it's covering everything and all we wanted to do is cover just this real bottom section of the button itself before I do that let's give that some breathing room too set its margins in this case to about three okay okay so in order to um, block out most of this and just leave some of the color here we're going to use the opacity mask and the opacity mask basically says um, that you can mask out whatever you want based on the alpha values of the colors that you're setting so let's uh, let's demo that so select opacity mask select gradient brush in this case we'll go for the radial and um, now you'll notice that there's not much happening and the reason being is that we haven't played with the alpha values yet on the actual uh, gradient itself and that's all the, the opacity mask really cares about it doesn't really care about the colors that you're using here so what we wanted to do is go from a nice uh, solid color in the middle and fade out to um, to nothing on the edges so we're going to leave this stop as alpha value of 100% and this stop will set it to zero and now you'll notice that we're going from that solid color out to nothing we'll go back to our trusty gradient tool and drag this all the way down to the bottom over here shrink it down and shape it just a touch so that it looks like it's glowing down at the bottom and that's all very well and good. Now we could leave that like that, but I think that that bottom gradient doesn't give us enough enough pop. So I think what we're going to do is and take the background again, copy that, paste it, and we're just going to give it a little bit more highlight. So we're going to call it bottom highlight. Sorry, highlight. Okay, bottom highlight here. We're gonna set, reset that fill, and we're gonna go with uh, a uh, white to white because it is. Well, first of all, make sure that it's radial, and then we'll go white to white because it is a highlight. And we'll we're gonna go from solid again in the middle out to transparent on the edges. So leave this here to at 100%. And we're going to take this one and set the alpha value to zero. Cool. So you've got it going from solid out to uh, transparent on the edge. Grab our gradient tool, drag that all the way down to the bottom, shape it. Now we don't want it covering up too much of the underlying color, so I'm going to take it, shrink it down a little bit. So we're still letting the underlying color sh shine through. Um, 
but I think, and in fact, I think we'll set this down to about 95%, so it's not as harsh. So we're still letting the underlying color uh, shine through. We're bleeding all the way to the edge of this button, so what I'd like to do is select that and give it the same breathing room as I did with this bottom color ellipse, uh, which I believe was three all around. And there you go. So there you have a basically a glossy button that's nicely styled. I've moved back out of the template now. I'm back in the button. And uh, yeah, uh, there's one other thing I'd like to show here, which is a little gotcha, which could bite you when you go to scale the button. So I'm going to copy that, paste it, move the button over here, and I'm going to set its width and height now to 50 by 50, which you would think would keep everything right but it doesn't and this has hurt me before and what's happening here is that the inner inner uh, paths that we've created uh, are all scaling individually and they're not scaling as a unit so as uh, as a result you end up with something that looks like this instead of uh, what we'd hope which is just a mini version of the big button fortunately that's fairly easy to fix we'll go back into the template of the button a template at a current and we'll take all the paths that we've created and we're going to right click and go group into view box now this view box here obviously comes a, a native out of the box with civil light 4 as uh, one of the containers that it supports um, in civil light 3 and previous it exists but in the civil light toolkit so you'll have to download that and install it before you can uh, do this but uh, anyway uh, let's group this into the view box there you go, gripped into the view box, and you'll notice now the uh, all the paths are scaling uniformly within the button, which is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so I think that uh, does it right now for the style. I think in the next video we'll take a look at um, proving out these styles, so basically setting some of the properties on these buttons, um, you know, playing with them, using them, seeing how we can use it on other buttons, and we'll also work on the rollover and pressed states for the button. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like more Silverlight tips, tutorials, and resources, please visit us at silverlighthowto.com.